All hits all the time. Star 98.3. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. We have a guest in studio, Shane Mattingly, who is uh, running for the Office of State's Attorney for St. Mary's County. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Hey. Fantastic to be here. Uh, you know, all my friends told me I always had a face for radio, yeah. so it's <laughs> nice to be here to actually test that out. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's great to have you in studio. Um, I, I want to get right to the... Uh, what I always ask people is, why would you put yourself out there and run for public office? Why, with especially the way people feel in this day and age about politicians, politics, why would you want to? Why would you want to run? <laughs> why would you want to do this to yourself and your family? Well, that's that's a, that's a great question. And sometimes when you're out in the campaign trail, you sort of wonder why you put yourself through it. I bet as well. But at the end of the day, it's all about uh, protecting our families, protecting our community, and you, and you think that. The problems that we have need a voice. Uh, there needs to be change. There needs to be an improvement in the safe and health of St. Mary's County. And I thought I had a plan and policies in place to make that effective change. And it was too important not to run, to okay. be honest. Well, let's talk about that a little bit um, as far as the change. And if I, if I think of myself, I'm going to run for office. Uh, I'm seeing a problem that I think I can fix. What is the problem what's with the what? Problem? What's the yeah. problem with what Richard Fritz is doing or not doing? Well, I see four basic problems that need to be addressed in St. Mary's County. Uh, one, we really need to get ahead of our heroin, our drug epidemic. Oh, what a mess! Number two is we have a serious domestic violence issue here in St. Mary's. Uh, number three, uh, we want to establish an elder abuse and financial fraud unit. Uh, number four is we want to establish a veterans treatment court. And you think Richard Fritch is not doing enough to do that? or Well, uh, he's been in office 16 years. He's running for uh, office to be in there 20. Mm -hmm. uh, what have we heard from him on these issues? Have we uh, heard from him over the last one year, two years, 10 years about how he's going to deal with this drug problem? Have we heard from him how he's going to address the recent spike in domestic violence? Have we heard what he's going to do for our veterans who have come home from overseas? Uh, have we heard him say anything about establishing an elder abuse and financial fraud unit? No, we haven't. And the time has come. We can't afford four more years of inaction on these issues. Mm -hmm. They need to be dealt with right away. And that's no offense to Mr. Fritz as a person or as an individual. I think it's a leadership issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get to those those issues that you just brought mm -hmm. up in just a minute. But I, I also wanted to because this is the when I when I heard you were running one of the because you are a prominent defense attorney in St. Mary's County. You're in the news all the time, and you're defending and you're doing. How does a defense attorney go from defending? Um, now they're your clients. I don't want to. No, no, it's People who fine. have been charged with a crime. I don't want to call them criminals or whatever, but some of them are. I didn't do it. You know what? Okay. Well, after you, it's all over, yes, some of them are. Yes. I know, and you have to defend them to the the best of your ability, and I get it. How do you totally go 180 and and become the top prosecutor if elected? Become the top prosecutor in St. Mary's County. You're going to see some of your. Your, your, probably your clients that you've defended, you're going to have to now prosecute them. How do you turn that around? Well, actually, that's an excellent question. Uh, basically, le let me uh, explain it this way. The difference between a defense attorney and a prosecutor is not as big as you might think. Because really, an attorney on either side of the case is looking at what are, what are the good points about this case? What are the bad parts about this case? Both lawyers are looking, can the case be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. So <clears throat> you're both looking at it really from for the same purpose. You know, what are the strengths and weaknesses and what's the right thing to happen I gotcha. <clears throat> at okay. the end of the day? Uh, so really from a, a, a legal standpoint, it's not all that different. But from obviously, I think what you're getting at is from a mental framework standpoint, it is different. Uh, my frustration, I guess, uh, after doing this for 27 years, I saw the need for change. And as a defense attorney, all you can do is advocate for a person on an individual case-by-case -case basis. Sure. Uh, with the problems that we have, that sort of platform isn't sufficient to affect the change that needs to have happen. The state's attorney really, in a lot of different ways, is the most powerful person in St. Mary's County. It's the head law enforcer. Yes. You can affect change. Yes. Uh, you can get on that platform. Uh, you can do things in the community that a defense attorney 
cannot do. Let me ask you this, uh, especially about you, you say there's an uptick in domestic violence in St. Mary's County. What? Why? I, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just I have not heard that. I haven't been paying attention and it's my yeah. failing. What is going on? Well, let, I me, mean, let me pile on to that question. Um, is there legitimately an uptick in domestic abuse, or is domestic abuse just the flavor of the month, um, given what's going on in the NFL and all that kind of stuff? You see this all the time. You know, th- th- this becomes the talking point that everybody's uh, hyper focused on. Is there genuinely an uptick in domestic abuse, and why uh, abuse is in St. Mary's if, County? If there is, why? Why is that happening? Well, <clears throat> Generally, and I would refer people who who love stats to mm-hmm. the Uniform Crime Report put out by the Governor's Office mm-hmm. and the Maryland State Police. Uh, basically, over the last five years, St. Mary's County has averaged over 600 reports of domestic violence each year. Yikes! But for 2013, that spiked to almost 850. Okay, so why is that? Well, that that is that is the question. I, I, I think, in part, it's also related to the uptick in drug use. Uh, you have to realize that the, the drug issue or any substance abuse issue doesn't exist in a vacuum. Uh, it also bleeds into issues regarding other crimes. For example, people that break into homes mm-hmm. don't do it because they just like breaking into homes. They're doing it to get money exactly. so they can buy drugs. Right. Sometimes with the domestic abuse issue, these people have substance abuse issues. They either get drunk or they get high. Violence ensues. Right. Lots of crimes, uh, uh, theft, bad checks, prescription fraud. All these things are sort of related. Okay. Um, so not only is crime just a law enforcement issue, but it's also a public health issue. Absolutely. So how do we deal with those in concert? Uh, how do you distinguish between the bad people that really need to go away to prison and the people that, uh, with a little guidance, you can get back to being See, productive citizens. Because you say that. You say that in in, um, in, in some of your literature and, and what you would bring in if you were elected. Um, you said, my office will also work with those who wish to repair the damage done to the families by domestic violence. A, the victim wishes to work with the abuser in repairing the family unit, which means you will consider alternatives to jailing those committed of domestic violence if and only if then you list a bunch of things correct and well yes and those things are sort of important Number but what one, about the state law shane what about i mean by the, the way the law says you have to go to jail if you hit your if you're well the law doesn't say that what is, okay basically the law you're the sa- lawyer here, no, no, but, but all i'm saying is basically ultimately punishment the ultimate punishment is decided by a judge. Right, right. So, okay. So, so there's some leeway there. The state there. can recommend. The state can can advise. But ultimately, if you have a conviction, it's ultimately up to the judge okay. uh, to decide what the ultimate outcome is uh, in any particular case. But obviously, the state's attorney has a huge influence in that. And, and the difference really comes down to common sense. We don't really have enough common sense in government, whether you're talking about the state's attorney's office all the way up uh, the ladder. You know, and hey, I know you're talking about the Ebola crisis, (laughs) certain lack of uh, common sense. Yeah, just, yeah. On all that. And you, Shane Mattingly, will go on the air and you will say right now that you are against Ebola. Is that correct? Yes, it's (laughs) it's not in my literature, but I'm thinking (laughs) that maybe I need to come out with a supplement. If you're just tuning in this morning, uh, we're talking with Shane Mattingly, who is running for uh, state's attorney for St. Mary's County Mm -hmm. against uh, Richard Fritz. And, you know, that's it's an office that, I don't know, most of us don't really have, have to much to do with, with and, until right. we find ourselves a foul of the law. Right. Um, but t- take me through the process of stage attorney. What is it that you guys do? If you, Let's say you win. What do you do? Well, there is, there is some sort of confusion. I have a lot of people think I'm running for attorney general right. for the entire state. Mm-hmm. When people think state's attorney, they go, oh, it must be a statewide office. Basically, you're enforcing the laws of the state for a particular county. So if it right. helps people, you're the lead prosecutor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how so, many people would be in your office? Uh, well, uh, probably about nine lawyers Okay, under me. Uh, you handle a wide range of cases, everything from speeding tickets on up, potentially to murder cases, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also do child support. Uh, you also do civil forfeiture, you know. Uh, seizing property from drug dealers, that type so, of thing. So, so it's a wide range of, of things so to handle. So if you're elected, you possibly could be the boss of people that you have fought in court against. Correct. <laughs> Correct. How's that on the first day? Is a muffin well, basket Well, no, that's fine because, <laughs> you know, actually, I'll tell you this. I've, I've had a, had talks with at least five members of Mr. Fritz's staff. Mm-hmm. Who I said, listen, I think you guys are doing a good job. I like how you approach your cases. Would you like to stay? 
and I've had positive responses. So, really, any, well, of course it, they're going to say they want to stay. They want to get sure, paid. Sure. <laughs> Right. Well, I'd love to work for you if you were to win. But my point is, it's it's more about the work. Sure, okay? right, right. I the mean, it, it's really, at the end of the day, it's about helping people, protecting people, helping St. Mary's be a, a safer, healthier place. And, and, you know, why wouldn't lawyers want to stay if that's the type of work they're doing? Let's talk about the because I had never heard of this until I read some of your literature, and that is uh, when we're talking about the Veterans Treatment Courts. Mm-hmm. All right, what's that is about? Is that kind of like, because T's very familiar with drug court. Is that kind of like well, a drug court? That is exactly like a drug court. Get I, out of I, here. I know How you, does that work? Well, basically what would happen is this. And, uh, um, you know, as you, as you guys know, we have uh, a very big military yes. uh, presence here right. in St. Mary's County. And to all the veterans out there, thank you for your service. However, you know, the, you, you go overseas, you come back. Uh, lots of people have PTSD or traumatic brain injury. And as you know, and I've heard you talk about it on the air, the VA has just totally dropped the ball. Listen, there, there's some real problems there. Yeah. So what happens when you get back? You have an untreated mental illness, basically. Uh, you act out, you get in trouble, all of a sudden you're a veteran, you served our country, you have the possibility of a jail and a criminal record. Mm. And, you know, that's just not right. If, if what you did was related to what your service to our country, you need the help. You deserve the help. That was a promise made to those people who served our country. And if the VA is going to drop the ball, I'm going to pick it back up. Are there any veteran treatment courts in Maryland? Uh, I don't think there's any any been established yet. Now, there was a uh, legislative uh, commission established to this, came out with a report uh, late last year uh, advocating for it. There are, there are, I think, approximately 100 and some treatment courts in different states, 35 different states around the country. Uh, the Maryland State Bar Association, I've, I've been talking with them. They've just been come out, came out in support of this particular idea. Uh, it's going to happen. That's and, awesome. That's great. And hopefully it's going to happen down here first. Uh, would love to be the first uh, veteran treatments court. Would you have the local judges, like in drugs court, with the local, because I know um, Judge yep. Abrams and Judge Stom, they're, I mean, they're in it to win it. I mean, they yeah, do it they're for ve- these They're both people. very committed uh, to that program. Would, would they, would there be another, would there be a judge that would be in charge of this? Or would it be somebody you, who is a veteran or somebody you bring in? Uh, down down here, it probably would not happen without a judge committed to that particular program. Right. Now, the difference is you, you'd probably have a district court judge uh, associated with that at this point because uh, obviously Judge Abrams, Judge Stom are jam-packed right, with right. what they have now. Those are some of the details that still need to be worked out. This is not simple as waving a wand because anytime you're dealing with government and judges and lawyers, <laughs> it's going to take right. a while to get done. But it, it needs to happen. It's going to happen. I put myself on the record that I'll do everything in my power to make it happen. You know what? They deserve it. They deserve uh, everything we can do for them because of what they've done for us. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. Well, listen, uh, again, we're talking with uh, Shane Mattingly, who is running for uh, state attorney, St. Mary's County. Um And let me just, I I think we've covered this, but I just want to kind of retill this field one more time. Um, Obviously, there is something that you feel is not getting done under Richard Fritz. What what are you going to bring to the party that's going to make this uh, a better community that that you feel that he's not doing now? Well, it's really the difference of, of being reactive to a problem or being proactive on a problem. He's had 16 years. Mm -hmm. He has a record for 16 years. He's going for 20. Uh, What has that experience brought to bear on the four issues that we've talked about today? I haven't heard him talk about these things. I haven't seen it. I've seen his, haven't seen him come up with any policies, haven't seen him in the paper, haven't heard him on the radio. Do Uh, you guys have a debate at all before the election? No, the legal... The League of Women Voters in the Chamber, for some reason, decided this race wasn't important enough no! to, uh, yeah, go figure. Well, you'll prosecute the hell out of them if you win. <laughs> <laughs> go get them. Poor League of Women Voters. What? What right, did he right, just yeah, say? Right. What? Oh, well, that's shameful. That's too bad. Well, you know, it is too bad. Debate. But you know what? Here's the thing. It's not like in this day and age you can't get your message out. Sure. Uh, you know, with social media, with right. radio, with print, uh all that stuff. It's mm-hmm. not like people don't know what his record is. It's not like people don't know what I'm proposing. I mean, really, at the end of the day, this is a referendum on what you think the fair administration of justice is. Mm-hmm. You know, if you feel that that's been 
fulfilled to 100 percent, then you're going to vote for Mm -hmm. Mr. Fritz. If you feel there's something wanting, Mm -hmm. uh, then you're going to consider me. And and I'll say this. If you don't believe I can do the job, you shouldn't vote for me, regardless of what you think of my opponent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, out of any candidate in any election down here in St. Mary's, we've been very detailed about what our platform is. You don't have to wonder about what we're going to do or what we're going to emphasize. It's out there. My point is, don't we deserve better? I mean, don't you think at the end of the day, do you go to bed at night and go, man, we're everything we could be or can be? Mm -hmm. I just think we can do better. We should expect more out of government. We should expect more out of the state's attorney's office. And I really believe that my ideas, my policies will make St. Mary's a safer, healthier place. And I know it takes a leap of faith. Anytime you're running against an incumbent, Mm -hmm. you know, most people go, yeah, it's that guy so bad. Yeah. Well, you know what? We deserve better than not so bad. Okay. You know, we deserve the very best that we can do. This is St. Mary's County. We have a wealth of, of people with experience and intelligence and education and common sense. We shouldn't settle. We shouldn't just settle for, uh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, Shane. Uh, get a little personal now. Uh, born, and ra- born and raised in St. Mary's? Yes, I was. That's uh, not so personal. Oh, well, don't be. Don't relax. <laughs> I'm not going to ask bank account numbers or anything. But let me ask you this. Um, are, are you married? I am not. I'm single. Single. Any kids? Uh, no kids, but I am in a committed relationship. I know my girlfriend's listening, so I don't want to give any impressions here. <laughs> Excellent. What do you like to do? In Southern Maryland, whether it's St. Mary's County or what do you like to do when you're not defending or campaigning? What do you do you like to read? Do you like I mean, would you have a hobby? Uh, Well, you know, I like to go to the gym Uh, uh, before the campaign. I also like to play a little rugby Mm. Uh, Rugby, back in the day. A Uh, little scrum here and there. A little scrum here and there. I like to mix it up. A little used to fights. All right. Weekend warrior type of stuff. (laughs) Fun. All right. Well, listen, uh, again, this is uh, Shane Mattingly. He's running for uh, state's attorney for St. Mary's County. Good luck to you, sir. And I appreciate you coming in today. Yeah, thank you for taking time. Oh, I had a blast. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Thank you. Ten minutes in front of 8 o'clock. Let's get a uh, check of traffic, see what's going on.